Chapter Three: Doubts and Questions. Sutra. One day, Magistrate Wei arranged a great vegetarian feast on behalf of the master. Commentary: The doubts referred to in the title of this chapter were those of Magistrate Wei, who did not understand how the Vajrayak Bodhidharma would have told the Emperor Wu of Liang. That the emperor had no merit. Therefore, the magistrate questioned the sick patriarch about it. The magistrate invited the master to a great vegetarian feast. All the bishops, laymen, Taoists, scholars, officials, and common people were invited to the meatless meal. Politicians liked to eat meat, but because magistrate Wei propagated the Buddha drama. He invited them all to a vegetarian meal. Great means that many people attended. In China, the thousand monk vegetarian feast occurs when a thousand bishops are invited to have a meal among a thousand monks. There is sure to be one ahat. So making offerings to a thousand bishops is making offerings to one ahat. Which one is the ahat? No one knows. If you knew, you would just make offerings to the ahat, and not to the thousand bishops. This great feast, however, was an offering to not just a thousand bishops. I believe it was to ten thousand. The banquet was held on behalf of the sixth patriarch, as one who had left home. The master himself could not invite people to lunch. Laymen made offerings to those who have left home. Those who have left home do not make offerings to laymen. Recently, I said to a visitor from Hong Kong, "Remember, lay people make offerings to the Bodhidharma, protect and support the Triple Jewel. Do not be supported by the Triple Jewel." She replied, "I have never, in my life, heard a good knowing advisor speak such honest words to me. This certainly has changed me." When I return, I will be different from what I was before. Magistrate Wei was the sixth patriarch's disciple, and he wished to cause everyone to recognize and believe in his master. He invited them to eat vegetarian food because it is said, "If you want to lead them to the Buddha's wisdom, first you ought to give them something good to eat." In fact, one definition of the word "pupil" goes goes. People, when they eat, they're happy. If you feed them well, they can't forget it. Ah,、oh, they say I've got to go listen to some more sutra lectures. They come time after time to get what they want—not dharma, but good food. They eat and eat, and soon, when they hear the dharma, they say the dharma tastes even better than these vegetables, and then they don't run away. Magistrate Wei understood human nature. He arranged this feast on behalf of his master. He did not do it for himself, saying, "Look at me making great offerings to the Triple Jewel." He was not seeking notoriety, notoriety. He probably used the technique used to at today's five hundred dollar a plate fundraising dinners. We are going to build Nanhua Temple. He probably said, "You should donate five thousand dollars, or perhaps fifty thousand dollars, because the assembly was held for the purpose of building a temple." The magistrate asked the master about the merit and virtue of Emperor Wu, the Great Liang Dynasty emperor, who built many temples and gave sanction to many monks to who left home. Sutra. After the meal, the magistrate asked. The master to take his seat, together with officials, scholars, and the assembly. He bowed reverently and asked, "Your disciple has heard the high master explain the sutra. It is truly inconceivable. I now have a few doubts and hope you will be compassionate and resolve them for me." The master said, "If you have any doubts, please ask me, and I will explain." The honorable way said. Is not what the master speaks the same as the doctrine of Bodhidharma? 
The master replied, It is. The magistrate asked, Your disciple has heard that when Bodhidharma first instructed the emperor Wu of Liang, the emperor asked him, All my life I have built temples, given sanction to the Sangha, practiced giving, and arranged vegetarian feasts. What merit and virtue have I gained? Bodhidharma said, There was actually no merit and virtue. I, your disciple, have not yet understood this principle and hope that the High Master will explain it. Commentary Magistrate Wei represented the entire assembly in requesting the drama. He was extremely respectful, stern, and upright in his bearing. He didn't dare laugh or cry. The magistrate had some small doubts, not big problems. He asked the master to bestow great compassion on him. Please resolve my little problem, because there are a few things I simply do not understand. Honorable is a term of great respect. The magistrate was called honorable because he was a high-ranking official. When my disciples go to Taiwan to take the precepts, they should call the old cultivators the bishops honorable. Honor them once and they will be delighted. If you do not honor them, they will say, This newly presented one is extremely disrespectful. The magistrate asked, Don't you explain the same principle as Bodhidharma? The Sikh said, Yes, I do. It is the mind to mind seal transmitted by Bodhidharma, the direct pointing to the mind to see the nature and realize Buddhahood. The magistrate said, I have heard that when Bodhidharma went to Nanjing to convert the Emperor Wu of the Liang Dynasty, the Emperor told him, I have built many temples. The Emperor Wu of Liang spent his entire life building temples. He allowed many bishops to leave home and he made offerings to food, offerings of food and shelter to them. He would bow to anyone who left home. Wasn't this good? He gave the wealth of his country to the poor and arranged many vegetarian feasts. What merit and virtue have I gained? He asked. Emperor Wu had to be number one in everything. Therefore, when he met Bajak Bodhidharma, he did not seek the drama. He sought Bodhidharma's praise instead. He wanted Bodhidharma to give him a high hat. He was afraid that Bodhidharma might not know of his merit, and so he introduced himself, saying, Look at me, I have built hundreds of temples to house thousands of monks, all of whom left home under my official sanction. What kind of merit have I gained? What he meant was, Look at me, I am an emperor unlike all others. Everything I do is good and meritorious. He didn't seek the drama to end birth and death. He wanted to put himself on display instead. This is like a certain drama protector who says, Do you know me? I am the greatest, strongest drama protector. I give all my money to the triple jewel. In fact, the money he uses to play around with women is several thousand times greater than the money he gives to the triple jewel. But he says he gives it all to the triple jewel. Isn't this perverse? He never speaks about the money he squanders all over heaven and earth. But when he gives a dollar to the temple, he says, I gave a dollar to the temple. Do you know that? He is certainly the emperor Wu's disciple. With his merit and virtue, he too can be an emperor someday. Hearing the emperor brag about me, myself, and I, boasting, boasting and advertising his merit, and in general exalting himself, Bodhidharma thought, How can a sage go around backslapping? How can I agree with him? Ordinary people would have said to the emperor, Oh, yes, yes, your merit is indeed great. No one in the world can match it. Bodhidharma was a patriarch. He could not possibly have indulged in such behavior, and so he said, No merit, totally without merit. 
Sir Chua, the master said, there actually was no merit and virtue. Do not doubt the words of a sage. Emperor Wu of Lang's mind was wrong. He did not know the right drama. Building temples and giving sanction to the Songha, practicing giving and arranging vegetarian feasts is called seeking blessings. Do not mistake blessings for merit and virtue. Merit and virtue are in the Dharma body, not in the cultivation of blessings. The master said further, seeing your own nature is merit and equanimity is virtue, to be unobstructed in every thought, constantly seeing the true, real, wonderful function of your original nature is called merit and virtue. Commentary, the sixth patriarch replied, do not doubt the sage's words. There really was no merit and virtue. Emperor Wu was seeking fame. He was not seeking the orthodox Dharma. The great master said, merit and virtue are in the Dharma body, not in cultivating blessings. What is merit then? Seeing your brilliant, wonderful, original nature is merit. With merit, you can see your nature. What is merit? At first, it is difficult to sit in jhana meditation, but after a while, it becomes natural. When you begin to sit, your legs and back hurt, but after a while, you, you defeat your legs and they do no longer hurt. When your legs do not hurt, you have merit. If your legs hurt, you have no merit. Seeing your own nature is merit, seeing your original face, you ask, what does my original face look like? You must find out for yourself. I cannot describe it to you. And even if I did, you wouldn't know because your knowledge would have come from the outside. Enlighten yourself to your own nature. Ah, you will say, my original face just looks just like this. Then you must have your vision and the self-nature certified by a good knowing advisor. You cannot set yourself up as a king and say, I am the emperor, I am a bodhisattva, like the hippie who had poisoned himself with drugs to the point that he claimed to be a bodhisattva. When he actually was nothing but a demon, equanimity is virtual, without selfishness, everything is equal. There is no prejudice or partiality. If you are fair, just, and open-minded, you have virtue. To be unobstructed in every thought, if you are unobstructed, your thoughts flow here, stop there, and become attached. Obstruction means attachment. If you are not obstructed, you can always see your original nature. As the sixth patriarch said when he was enlightened, how surprising that the self-nature is originally pure in itself. How surprising that the self-nature is originally unmoving. How surprising that the self, the self-nature is originally not produced or destroyed. How surprising that the self-nature is so inconceivable. This is to constantly see the true, real, wonderful function it is called merit and virtue. If you do not seek within yourself, but give sanction to be shoes, build temples, and give to the poor instead, you accumulate blessings. Blessings, however, are not merit and virtue. You should perfect your own merit and virtue just as the Buddhas have done. Sutra, inner humility is merit, and the outer practice of reverence is virtue. Your self-nature establishing the 10,000 dramas is married and the mind substance separate from thought is virtual. Not being separate from the self-nature is married and the correct use of the undefined self-nature is virtual. If you seek the merit and virtue of the Dharma body, simply act according to these principles for this is true merit and virtual. Commentary, you should not be arrogant. In all situations, you should be polite. Do not say, look at me, I'm better than anyone else. I'm so talented. I know more Buddha drama than you. 
if you show off like this you are being proud not humble and you have no merit when you speak to people you should be easy and polite not like a wooden board which smashes their heads with a single sentence you don't have to hit people all you have to do is say one sentence and you split their heads open which is a faster thing than using an iron bar but if you are humble you are never impolite outwardly you should see everyone as better than you don't be self-satisfied arrogance causes harm humility brings benefit If you fill your cup of tea until it overflows and then keeping pouring, you are being wasteful. Do not be full of self. You, if you are polite, you will gain benefit. Do not say, I am the greatest, I am number one. I am so intelligent that I understood long ago things which you still do not know. In Buddhism, you should not fear that you will not understand. Fear only that you will not practice. Whether or not you understand is not so important. But if you do not practice, you are useless. The mind substance should be separate from false thought, but not separate from proper thought that is virtual. Turn the light around and reverse the illumination to see your self-nature, which constantly gives rise to prana. This is married in an impeded, limitless transformation. The correct use of the self-nature enables you to do whatever you wish while never doing unclean things. If you are seeking the Dharma body, you should act in accord with these principles because it is by means of such merit and virtue that the Dharma body is realized. Sutra, those who cultivate merit and virtue of their thoughts do not slight others, but always respect them. Those who slight others and do not cut off the me and mine are without merit. The vain and unreal self-nature is without virtue because of the me and mine, because of the greatness of the self and because of the constant slighting of others. Commentary, You should not slight people, animals, or any living beings. For example, whenever Sada Paributta Bodhisattva met someone, he immediately bowed and said, I dare not slight you because you are going to a Buddha. Sada Paributta Bodhisattva, who was a previous incarnation of Shakyamuni Buddha, Realized Buddhahood because of his practice of universal respect while walking the Bodhisattva path. Those who slight others and do not cut off the me and mine are without merit. You have no merit if, whenever you meet someone, you immediately become jealous, terrified that they will be better than you are or more intelligent or will surpass you in some other respect. Drug jealousy causes you to belittle them. You see yourself as great. See how big I am, you say. No one can compare with me in the present age. There is no emperor, but if there were, it would certainly be me. None of you would have a share. Why? Because I am more intelligent than all of you. I can dominate you but you can't dominate me i myself me and mine are not cut off and put not put down there is no room for merit because you are too full of self you do not really cultivate and so your self nature is unreal you are not basically genuine you do not believe in yourself and you do not know whether you are true or false I did not tell you to drink or smoke. Why are you drinking and smoking? I did not tell you to go gambling. Why did you go? You don't know why you do these mixed up things. The self-nature in this way is vain and unreal. This happens because you have no merit and you see yourself as too big. Look at me, you say. 
and enlightened and am just like him. He did not say that he himself was enlightened. He said that the Dharma Master was enlightened and that the two of them were just alike. He might as well have introduced himself by saying, I am enlightened. This, me, myself, and I is too big. There is no merit here. Sutra. Good knowing advisors continuity of thought is merit and the mind practicing equality is that directness is virtual. Self cultivation of one's nature is merit and self cultivation of the body is virtual. Commentary in thought after thought without interruption. Every thought should be right in thought after thought without stopping. Every thought should be cultivation. This is merit. At first, it is forced, but after a time, it becomes natural, and the naturalness is married. Always be even-minded and impartial, direct and without deceit. That is virtual. If you have not seen your nature, you must cultivate it. How do you cultivate it? By not giving rise to affliction. When someone hits you, think of it as if you had turned into a worm. When someone scolds you, pretend that they are singing a song or speaking a foreign language. Or he's not scolding me, he's speaking Japanese, chi chi cha cha, or is it Spanish? If you think of it that way, there is no trouble at all. If someone tries to speed at heaven, the speed just falls right back into his own face. If someone scolds you, but you take no notice, it is just as if he was scolding himself. When hit, you can think. I have run into a wall. It certainly hurts. Can you deny that it is your own comic retribution returned to you? If you bump your head in the dark, do you hit the wall with your fist? If you do, your fist will hurt and there will be even more pain. Pay no attention and nothing will be happened. My Acharya Bodhisattva said, The old fool wears second-hand clothes and fills his belly with tasteless food, mental holes to make a cover against the coat and the thirst of the myriad of affairs of life. According to what comes are done scolded, the old fool merely says, Fine, struck the old fool falls to down to sleep, spit on my face, I just let it dry. I have strength and energy and give you no affliction. Paramita is his time. He gains the jewel within the wonderful, know this news and then what wrong is there of not perfecting the way? This is wonderful, but not everyone can do it. The drill within the wonderful is not easy to obtain. Cultivation of the nature is simply not getting angry. How does one cultivate the body? Do not bad, do bad things. Have no lust, hatred, or delusion. If you do not steal, steal or lust, you cultivate the body. The body. That is virtual. Sutra. Good knowing advisors. Merit and virtual should be seen with one's own nature, not sought to giving and making offerings. That is the difference between blessings and merit and virtual. Emperor Wu did not know the true principle. Our patriarch was not in error. Commentary. You cannot say I make offerings to the true Virgil. I have married. It is not married, just blessings. Therefore, blessings and married and virtual are different. If you perform acts of blessings, you will receive the karmic retribution of blessing in future lives. But you obtain the advantages of married and virtual now in this life. Bodhidharma wanted to take the emperor across but the emperor's ego was too big. Therefore, in order to break the emperor's attachment, Bodhidharma said that he had no merit and virtue. 
the imperial was not displaced and from then on he ignored Bodhidharma. No matter what Dharma Bodhidharma spoke, he wouldn't listen. Why should I listen to you? he said. He would not respond to Bodhidharma's compassionate efforts to save him and so Bodhidharma just went away. After a time, the emperor died of starvation. Think it over. How could one with merit and virtual starve to death? He died of starvation because he had no merit and virtue. Bodhidharma had wanted to wake him up so that he would not have to die that way. But a pity that the emperor's view of himself was so big that Bodhidharma couldn't help him.